Would you like to know why it's almost impossible to hire a qualified cybersecurity professional in 2025 and beyond? If so, this video is for you. My name is Mike Gibbs. I'm a network architect, network security architect, and enterprise architect with a little over 25 years experience. I've interviewed over 6,000 technology professionals. And in today's video, we're going to talk about why it's near impossible to hire a cybersecurity professional. Now, the reality is we are in the midst of a severe talent shortage. Now, there are plenty of uh, resumes that get sent to us for jobs. There are plenty of, of security certified people, but it's near impossible to find someone that actually knows security. And there's a massive difference between, say, a certification and what we actually need for the job. So if we actually look at some of the data, uh, some of the data suggests about a 5 million uh, worker shortage, uh, currently speaking, uh, in the cybersecurity world. Uh, the ISC squared uh, in a recent study showed that there was over 500,000 positions open in just the United States. And the reality is it's so hard to hire. So if we look at a CyberSeq report, they say that for every 100 job openings in the US, we can only fill uh, 74 of them, which means there's a 26% gap. And employers, we're getting flooded with resumes, but we still can't find people that can actually do the job because we're not looking for people that just know how to configure stuff. That's not what we need. We need people that can influence, that can lead, that have professional judgment, that can understand the impact of things to the system. So let's talk about why most people are not getting hired. So if we look at a SANS uh, GIAC uh, cybersecurity skills survey, they found that uh, when they asked 52% of security leaders, they said, look, we have lots of applicants, but we can't find anybody that knows anything about security. And what they particularly pointed out is that most candidates can't understand real world environments. Like what, what are the results of a security assessment? What goes into an incident response and how do we do it? What goes into designing uh, security or defending the organization from harm? So a lot of, uh, information on that, which is a lot of what I've always talked about, the lack of competency. Now, this one should terrify people to be failing on something so simple like this, but it's the reality. And that's why we train so many people in communication skills. 70% of employers believe communication skills are lacking in people that are applying and they can't hire someone without the right communication skills. And here's the reason why. Real cybersecurity is going to be about influence and influencing people to maybe not take an action, influencing the executive team to say maybe spend some money, influencing a new process or a new type of security and going along with the marketing campaign that goes along with that. And most people just don't know how to do that. So if you can't translate business language to a technology solution, if you can't understand what a stakeholder needs, if you can't get precision information so that with precision information, you can come up with a pre precision solution, you can't be hired. And so about 70% of people are failing just on communication skills on the interview because it will impact their ability to do the job. Now, uh, Tech Target did a study in 2024, and they found that organizations are flooded with people that want to want to break into the system, uh, ethical hackers, if you will, but they desperately need and can't find security architects, uh, governance, uh, uh, GRC type professionals, and defensive security experts. So there's a mismatch between the skills that we employers want need and want to hire for versus what people are training. And if, some, if you want to hire an airplane pilot and someone's trained to be a nurse, no matter how much you love nurses, you can't hire that nurse to fly the plane. Now, the next thing that really uh, affects people, and it's one of the main reasons I can't hire people in most cases, is lack of systems thinking. And here's what I mean. I don't care if you can make a change on a firewall rule. You know, that's nice. But I care that you can understand the impact of the change that you made on the firewall rule to the rest of the organization. Because if you don't understand that, you're dangerous just by only knowing what to do. We don't need technicians anymore. AI can do that stuff. We need people that know what uh, the impact of their role. So if you can't explain how TCP sets up a connection, if you can't explain how DNS works, if you can't explain uh, IAM and how that could be used to impact it, 
and you don't you don't see the impact of one change to another change, you're not prepared for the security and cybersecurity roles of today. So employers report that people need end-to-end -end system awareness, and uh, that was highlighted by a cybersecurity skills gap report recently that came out of the UK. Now, lack of professional judgment. Professional judgment is all about saying, I've got this option, I've got this option, and uh, given the trades, which is better? Because there's no perfect option ever. So it's hard to find people that can have that professional judgment, understand how to prioritize threats and prioritize a mitigation plan for them or operate with the impact of if I do this, what's its impact on the business? What's its impact on the workers? What's its impact on security? Now, a lot of it came back to what I always talk about, which is lack of depth. And there's so many people that click, click, click and touch things on their hands, but they fail the interview because of lack of depth. And 80% of security hiring managers are saying candidates know how to use tools, but they don't understand the underlying technology, the underlying protocols, the underlying frameworks, which is what I always talk about. You can build stuff all day long, but if you don't learn the underlying technology, you won't actually understand the impact of a change. So it's not about knowing how to. It's knowing how all the underlying technology works. Because if you understand all those things we're talking about, you can see the big picture, which most people can't see. And that big picture is, okay, if we do this, what's its impact to the system? If we do this, what's its impact to the system? If we make this change, what's the impact of the system? So what you need to do is just change what you're learning. What we're looking for is someone that can communicate risks to executives, that can design secure systems, evaluate the impact of a change to the system. Someone that can understand that security is key to the business because if the security isn't right, either those business systems will be down, their data or private intellectual property will be exfiltrated, which could cause the company to go bankrupt and everybody to lose their jobs. So think about that. If you're not getting hired in cybersecurity, it's okay. Now you know what to do. Really learn that infrastructure. Really learn those technologies. Learn that end-to-end -end environment. Focus on your communication skills, your ability to exercise influence, your ability to lead. And now you have the skills that employers are demanding for the best cybersecurity roles. And it's obviously required for a cloud security architect or a security architect. These skills are absolutely critical. But as we start moving into the world of AI and our hardcore engineers that we want to keep, the best of the best engineers are really about impact analysis, evaluation of trade-offs, looking at the technical alternatives and figuring out what's the best for the organization given its constraints. And they typically work with architects on that as well, more as a technical subject matter expert. And we all always need people with that level of expertise. And of course, if you look at any architecture role for the most part, an enterprise architect, a cloud architect, an AI architect, any kind of architecture role, it's all about looking at all of these planning things. They impact everything together into a cohesive strategy for that organization. So get these skills and you'll have a much better cybersecurity career. Now, if you'd like to become a security architect, or a cloud architect, or an enterprise architect, or an AI architect, or you're not getting hired, join me on a free architecture webinar where we'll talk about uh, what we do with, say, security architects. I run webinars for cloud architects, AI architects, enterprise architects. Join for any of these webinars, and I'll go over the skills that you need or assess you or give you guidance or whatever I can to assist you in your career. And uh, these webinars, which I'm talking about, are completely free. Uh, you can sign up in the description of this video. While you sign up for our free webinar in this video, sign up for some other free things, free guides on, say, how to win the interview, free guides on, say, how to become a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or an AI architect, and many other things are free. So sign up for them. They'll be emailed to you, and uh, I hope they help you in your career. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architect, security architect, cloud security architect, AI architect, enterprise architect, or any other architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you in another video or a webinar real soon. Take care.